Welcome to the Heart Centered Entrepreneur Podcast. I want you to be rich. Yes, I want abundant financial success for your business. But I don't just care about your business making money. I care about you too. I want you to be rich in happiness, in the impact you make, in your relationships, and in how you give back. I'm Anna. I built my six-figure business as a side hustle while I was pregnant with my daughter in 2016. Now I've helped dozens of women do the same. I'm here to help you build a profitable, heart-centered, fully booked business with the latest tips on sales and visibility, with proven mindset hacks, and sneak peeks behind the scenes with what's working right now in the online space and in my business. Ready to make more money with heart? Let's go. Hello, hello. If you are joining me live or watching the replay, please say hello to me. Hashtag replay. You know, I love to pop back and answer your questions. So anything that comes up for you, just let me know. But that's why I'm here in this community is to support you. I'm so excited to talk today about a topic I've been talking to several of my clients about. Some of my clients that are like brand new newbies, but a lot of my clients that are not newbies, that are immediate or advanced entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that are already making six figures in their business, multi six figures and beyond. And I've been introducing this concept to them and it's really been resonating. And so I was like, I have to bring this to my community. And that is what I call the beginner's mindset for experts. (laughs) And I really feel like at the start of our business, a lot of our success comes from unashamedly having a beginner's mindset right? Often when we are trying something new, we have nothing to lose, right? When we are starting our business or getting visible, like it is hard, but it's not that hard because it's like, oh, it's okay if I look silly because I can use the excuse that I don't know better or that I'm trying this, or there's some grace given to beginners. There's some grace given to newbies, right? I remember when I was first starting salsa dancing, like I was almost like proud of the fact that I was a newbie because I'm like, haha, you can't judge me for my bad dancing skills because I'm a newbie right? And what's really interesting is I think that this beginner's mindset is what helps us be brave and take action and get good results and data. But I think we lose a little bit of our edge or our willingness to be a beginner as we advance in entrepreneurship. And so I want to talk to you about this. What would it look like for you as an intermediate, as an advanced entrepreneur to have a beginner's mindset and how would it change the game in the results you get? And I think it'd actually be wild, right? I have a fun little story for you and then some tips around this that I think might be helpful. So I taught my daughter to ride her bike recently. As you know, we went to Ireland and my friend Stephanie was like, there's a great island, the the Aran Islands, that you can bike. And I was like, oh my goodness, in my head, I'm like, I just realized my seven-year-old doesn't know how to ride a bike. And at first I had mom guilt, like, oh my gosh, like I haven't taught her to ride. But I also realized we've been in so much transition for the last few years that we haven't really, it was number one, she hasn't owned a bike. Number two, we hadn't really been in like a bikeable neighborhood. Like it just wasn't optimal to teach her or cross my mind. So I was like, have you ever had like one of those things in like motherhood or business where you're like, dang it, I should know that already. Right. Um, but I had it in my mind of like, you know what, she's going to learn to ride, or at least we're going to try our best. And we had about, I think two weeks to learn. And so got her a bike and we practice every day. And it was such a fun deadline and fun reason to learn the skill. I think sometimes we need a reason. I think about like people that I've never run a marathon, but if you have, right, like what a fun excuse to be active and practice every day. Yes, to run the marathon, but think about what a better runner you get in the process of running the marathon, right? And I think about that with my daughter, like she was learning to ride her bike, to bike on the Aran Islands, but also we came back to the States and she was such a proud bike rider. Our front yard right now isn't super landscaped. It's kind of like rugged, but she was like proudly, like basically like mountain biking off-roading through our little backyard, right? And then we there's this little cul-de-sac we go over and bike at now. And she is like biking off the curb. And I'm like, wow, like I, I don't even, I rode a bike much earlier than she did as a girl, but I wasn't biking off of curbs, right? Like that's really, really brave. Um, and so I just think it's so interesting when we have that beginner's mindset or even like as she was learning to ride her bike, I remember we were learning and she totally like biffed it and fell off. And some of our neighbors were walking by, but everyone was like, 
how are you doing? Great job. Get back up. Right. We didn't make it a big deal. Right. We just made it like, of course, you're going to fall down. Of course, in the process of riding bike, you're going to mess up. And I think in entrepreneurship, like we have to have that attitude around trying things new. Like, of course, it didn't so go so great. Of course, you posted in a Facebook group and the formatting was weird or you went live and you stumbled, whatever it is. Right. So. I've really adapted this mindset for myself in general, but this year I've been doing, I've been just feeling a little bit more now that I'm like settled in my house. I feel like I have a little more margin and inertia and stability to grow again, to risk again, to scale my business again. Right. Um, I feel like for most of my clients and myself included, like there's seasons of growing your income and then like stabilizing and growing and stabilizing. And I've had a year or two of really like stabilizing, And, you know, part of that was like buying my house and moving across the country and like, or the state and all of that. But it just feels like I'm at a place where I'm stable in my life and I'm just feeling this era of growth again. I'm feeling this era of momentum. And so with that comes the willingness to try new things, the willingness to risk. And I've been doing that. You guys know, as I've been playing a little bit behind the scenes with Facebook ads and I've been having some fun success there. Um, Also, you know, with dance, of course, that is still newer to me. So keeping my beginner's mindset there and then a few other things that I've been trying in my business. Um, But what I want to say to you is the reason I've been having this conversation with several of my intermediate slash advanced clients is because our business goes in these cycles, right? Like this is what I really see it as I wrote it down here. First, we get clarity. Then with that clarity, we have to get visible in market. Then with that additional marketing. Now we have people to sell to with those people that we're selling to. Now we have to serve them and often hire a team to help us support those clients. Right. And now that we have team to support us, you know, we have increased capacity and it's time to get to selling again. Right. (laughs) And now we're back at that part of like, okay, how do I get more visible with my increased capacity? How do I sell? Blah, blah. It really goes in cycles. And so I think sometimes we think like, oh, I just have to make it through and figure out like how to get visible or how to sell or how to hire and fire a team. But we're always one business problem solves one thing and then creates another business problem. (laughs) or as we say, opportunity area, right? And so I just think it's remembering that we're always going to be beginner in something. We're always going to be a newbie in something. Part of business is the game of constantly having something to solve, something to fix. There's always an opportunity to grow. There's always a way to get better, right? Once you make consistent 8K months, you can work towards consistent 15K months. Once you do that, you can work towards 20, 50, 100, you can work towards million dollar months, right? There's always somewhere to grow in business. There's always somewhere to be a newbie. And the reason I'm saying this is like not to be the bearer of bad news, but to just like settle into it. There'll always be something I'm doing in my business that's new and that's making me look a little silly. And so how can I just get used to this, right? The other thing, not only are we going in these business cycles, right? But we're also going in life cycles, right? I think about myself as a mom, like there's always something that I'm a newbie at in motherhood, right? At first I was like a newbie at having newborns. Then I was a newbie at having toddlers. Then I was a newbie at having elementary schoolers. And now that my kids are kind of becoming pre-teenage, I'm like, oh my goodness, what am I doing, right? And I think it'll always be that way. I think about myself as a woman, right? I feel like I got to know myself as like a teen, as a 20 year old. Now I really feel like I'm getting to know myself as a 30 year old. And as I'm edging towards my forties, I'm like, you know, I feel like my body is changing a little bit. Okay. I feel like my body heals at a different rate. My skin looks and feels different, right? You guys know I've had some challenges with hair loss. Like I just think like, not only does our business go in cycles, but our life is always changing. And so what I think I'm saying is nothing is constant, but change, you know, that cycle, that sentence it's true. And I think because of that, something that we can get really good at as entrepreneurs is being willing to change. Okay. Being willing to not make it wrong. I think for me, I'm a safety freak. And so I like to have a lot of control, a lot of stability, but I think something that's given me a lot of peace is, is not making it wrong. That change is always a foot change is always among us. So because of that, 
always willing to be able to take this beginner's mindset. Okay, that was a really long intro. Now I'm gonna give you some tips on how to be an advanced beginner, how to have that really great beginner's mindset. But I just think what I see for my most successful clients is they really crush the skill. And I think what I see sometimes when I myself or when I see clients get stuck, I think it's that they're really not able to to take on a beginner's mindset, which is kind of ironic because my clients that are the most advanced are willing to take on the beginner's mindset because they're like confident and they're like, I don't care what it makes me look like. I'm going to be a beginner. I think sometimes when we're a beginner, we're self-conscious about being a beginner. And so we're like, I don't want to look like a beginner. You know what I mean? But I think the more confident you are, the more willing you are to be a beginner, right? I think about like Kelsey as she was learning to ride her bike. Like I, you know, as she was making mistakes, as she was failing, like everyone was being really kind to her. The neighbors, me were like, yeah, you're doing a great job, right? No one was criticizing her. So you can see how it was easy for her to keep her own self-talk positive, right? But I just think we really have to watch our own self-talk around this. Okay, so... Some of the things that can help you with a beginner's mindset are, I'm going to make, I'm going to give you a list of words, not making failure, rejection, hearing no, messing up, looking silly, looking wrong, bad. And this is a forever reconditioning because I think from a very early age, we're very sensitive to how others perceive us to success. I think especially as ambitious, successful women, we haven't gotten a lot of tolerance to failure because you may have grown up succeeding. You may have gotten a lot of good grades in school. You may have gotten a lot of promotions, right? So entrepreneurship is a little bit of a cold splash of water to your face when like you do bad at something, right? Or you fail at something, right? Often when you're failing, it's a good thing because it means you're stretching yourself, you're pressing yourself, you're trying new things, right? Always succeeding, always meeting your goals isn't always a good thing, right? Because it probably means that you're playing it really safe. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying it, okay? And so it's this weird conditioning to remind yourself if you are experiencing some rejection, some failure, some mess ups in business and life, it actually probably means that you're doing things right because you're trying new things. You're getting messy, right? So reconditioning our brains that failure is a normal part of the process of growing a business, right? Rejection, like for me, you know, right now I'm in a season of dating, right? For me, rejection, whether it's rejecting someone else or someone else rejecting me is a normal part of finding my next husband, right? If you are on the path to finding your next five clients on the road to that, you're going to get rejection from five other people, right? And it's referring me, I'm using the word rejection, like that's a really strong word, right? But especially for some of you that are sensitive to rejection or sensitive to conflict or sensitive to someone saying no to you, it really can feel like that, right? Um, again, hearing no, messing up, making mistakes, looking wrong, looking silly. I shared with you guys that one of my favorite quotes from my coach Lacey is just this reminder that I don't always get it right, but I make it right. What does this mean? That means with our clients or with our community, we're not going to be perfect, but what we can do is be someone of integrity that always goes back to fix it, right? Again, going away from perfectionism and more towards excellence because perfectionism is going to slow you down in your business. Excellence will get you very far, right? Doing things well to the best of your ability. If you do make an error or mistake, going back and making it right, trying to prevent a mistake so that it doesn't happen again, right? I also try to curate this culture in my team. I tell my ladies, like, if you make a mistake, that's okay, right? But let's not, let's try not to make the same mistake twice. And also, if you do make a mistake, let's um, fix it right? Let's fix it. Let's not make it again. But also like mistakes are totally normal and actually useful because it kind of shows us where the errors are, right? In business, it's a lot of, you know, I think about us as as like little earthworms, right? Like we're not able to really, we have to progress often in business by like digging through the dirt and getting to the next little hole. We can't see what's there. Like 
a lot of times in business, we want to have this like bulletproof plan. Or for me, I remember when I was starting off in business, when I would make a decision about what I wanted to offer or my message or my visibility plan, I wanted to be guaranteed that my plan would work before I took action. Right. And it really was less about perfectionism for me and more about like, I didn't want to waste time. I like to be efficient and productive. So I wanted to know the decision I was making would be perfect in that way. Instead, I realized like, oh, in entrepreneurship, sometimes you don't know if it's right or wrong until you start taking action. Reconditioning our brains, that is normal, right? And I talk about this in my book, Freedom Fund, right? But the remembering the goal is, I just had this conversation with my OBM yesterday too, right? I had this little metric of like the amount of people I wanted to reach out to for the current launch I'm in. And I didn't quite meet that metric, but I knew, realized I needed to shift my goal towards something else, like following up with people or whatever, right? And it, I had to continually remind myself, like, yes, we need to set a goal, but the point of the goal is not always to make it to the goal, but to get us to take massive action to move closer to that goal than we've ever been and to give us that direction, right? But knowing that it's so normal to hear no, mess up, look wrong, look silly along the way, Right. Okay, I want to talk about two more things that can help you with the beginner's mindset. I've shared this before, but really this affirmation is something that has fueled the last eight years of my business, which is my success is inevitable. If you know that you're going to succeed eventually, you don't mind looking silly along the way, right? I think when we doubt our eventual success, then we make those little micro failures, those little micro setbacks mean, oh my gosh, I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for entrepreneurship. I knew this this um, wouldn't work. I knew that I am dumb. I knew, right. It confirms it instead of like, okay, this is a little setback. Okay. This is data that I need to try something new, but I know I want to be successful at the end of the day. Right. I tell my clients this when they launch a new program or course, right? When you launch a new program or course, it's almost like creating a book, right? You are creating modules, like you're creating a whole situation. And so when I launch any of my first courses, I tell myself like, this is going to be a million dollar course, not right now, but eventually it will be, right? But first I have to create the course and over time it will be. And not really hinging your mindset on any one launch, whether the first launch goes good or not so great, it doesn't really matter because you're going to keep launching it. You're going to keep sailing the ship. You're going to keep moving the course until you figure out how to sell it. You're going to keep innovating because the success of that course is inevitable, right? And not making any of the little benchmarks along the way mean anything. Another thing that served me so much in my beginner's mindset, I think about that this with the Facebook ads that I'm trying. I think about this with salsa dancing, with anything, is really making a 90-day commitment. And I challenge my clients to this often when they're thinking about doing something new, whether it's like getting visible on Instagram or whether it's launching a new offer, right? Can you commit to it for 90 days, even if you don't see any external feedback or traction on it, because for the first 90 days of a project, it's usually the opposite, right? Like even if you think about like when you're hiring a new team member, right? A lot of times these risks, getting more visible, whatever, it costs us time and money at first. It doesn't save us time. It doesn't make us money, right? It's like an investment in the future and often takes 90 days for something to stick. So it's asking yourself, am I willing to do this for 90 days and start pushing this boulder up the hill um, and, and not getting traction at first. And I think that 90 day commitment is something that has served me and really helps me stay in the room and just reminding myself, my job is to be faithful to the course for these 90 days. When I was doing some, I hired my dear friend, Elena, to do some mentorship with me on Facebook ads a few months ago. And I just remember like being in the Zoom room with her, her pulling up like all the spreadsheets in the back ends of Facebook ad manager, which like I oddly enjoy being in the back of now. But at first, like it really gave me anxiety to be back there just because naturally I'm not like a tech girl, right? Like that is just not my my zone. My zone is like being here in the community is being on Zoom with my clients. Like I could do that all day long in my sleep, right? Um, but I really had to like take some deep breaths and tell myself like, it's okay. Just tell her you didn't understand, ask her to repeat it, try again tomorrow, take some deep breath, stay in the room. Don't hang up the zoom call. I've done that same thing, like learning salsa dance. There's been times where I've been in classes where I'm like, I am the worst dancer in the room. I look absolutely ridiculous. And I want to literally leave the room right now. 
But instead, I just tell myself, stay in the room. See if of all those 30 fancy moves they're trying to teach, if you can pick up on one. Can you pick up on one thing, Anna? Or even if you can't, can you can you stay in the room today, right? Can you do your best? Can you surrender what what, what you look like, what other people think of you? And I really feel like that skill is so useful. Again, because in entrepreneurship, even though I've been in entrepreneurship for eight years, I'm continually, number one, marketing and things change, but also I change, right? And so it's just being willing to do that is so, so important. Okay, um, one final thing I wanted to say is, oh, two things. Another beautiful thing my coach Lacey says is the cool thing about going towards a goal 100%, like whether you're launching a product or program or doing something, when you do it with all of your being, you either get a great result or you get data in the process. Let's say you're launching a program and it doesn't, the launch doesn't go as well as you want. If you showed up really well for the launch, at least at the end of the launch, you have data to know what worked and didn't work. If you peter out and stop showing up or give up, not only did the launch quote fail, but you also don't have data to know what worked and what didn't work, right? And so I really love this because I think it just reminds me when I'm working on something in my life or business to really go after my consistent actions so that I have the result or I have data at the end of that. Or like I like to say in dating, I either had a great time or I have a funny story to tell, right? You've heard me say that before, right? But the concept is like at the end of a day, I'm either going to have a great time with a guy or I have a funny story to tell my girlfriends after. And I think what this does is it just like lightens the process a little bit and reminds us that like, yes, we want to tenaciously work towards our goal, but even more than that, we want to be able to enjoy the process of the goal or make meaning out of the goal or out of the process, right? Because so much of life and business is working towards it. Because again, once we accomplish one goal, there's another goal around the corner, right? Okay, finally, I just want to talk about like messing up with full confidence. And this goes along with the idea of like you either have a great result or data. And that is, I feel like, again, and maybe this just comes because I did like musical theater growing up. And so have a, I potentially as a little girl had a lot of exposure when I was six or seven to looking really bad on stage. Like sometimes I would look great on stage, but sometimes I would like totally mess up in front of like a lot of people. Right. And then I realized like, I was fine. I didn't die. Like it's, it's okay. Right. Like nothing bad happened. And I think like the more you're exposed to failing or rejection and realizing that like nothing bad really happens from it, the more you're willing to do it, right. The more it isn't this like big built up thing. And so I think to this day, I still really am able to go on with full confidence and mess up or get rejected or make a mistake. Right. So whatever it is, what I want you to do next is really think through what you need a fierce beginner's mindset in, in your business right now, right? Is it, is it coming to clarity? Is there something in your business that you are reworking, whether it's your offers or, you know, something in your life or business that you're lacking clarity on that can be a really big intimidating thing, but are you willing to really go at it with a beginner's mindset and try your best there, right? Is it visibility? Is it marketing? Maybe you are marketing for the first time, or if like a lot of my clients, maybe you have had much success in marketing before, but you're getting ready to learn new updated marketing strategies. Maybe it's Instagram reels. Maybe it's something else, right? For a lot of my clients, once they fully book their business, right? Once they get to six figures or multi six figures, they have to go back to the drawing board again and saying like, what marketing do I want to do to get to the next level to increase my um, visibility even more, right? Can I be a beginner as I try new marketing tactics and strategies, right? Maybe it's when it comes to selling. Maybe it's what when it comes to team and building and hiring and firing team members, right? Maybe it's when it comes to money mindset. This one is huge for my clients, right? When they start making money, we do some money mindset work. But then I find when they start making six, multi-six figures, and they start having like more money than they know what to do with, you would think this would be a good thing, right? But I think often when we are wealthy women, we have this thing that like, oh my gosh, like I should know everything about money already. But here's the thing. No one knows everything about money, 
right? <laughs> and so I really encourage my clients at that level to have that beginner's mindset again of like, what does it look like to dive more into understanding my retirement? What does it look like to dive more into investing, right? And to purchasing homes and to et cetera, et cetera. And not feeling bad about like, I ask my accountant questions all the time. I'm like, what does this mean? Or should I do that or that? Or, you know, I call my, you know, the organization that holds my retirement money all the time and like ask them silly questions. And I'm just like, I should probably already know this, but can you tell me the answer to this? And what I find is that almost always people are super kind, right? I think about this in my mastermind too, sell with heart. All people ask questions all the time and they're like, I should already know this, but no, number one, you shouldn't already know. But even if you did, like, just ask again, just ask again, right? Um, maybe when it comes to, this is another one that my six-year clients struggle with often is like boundaries and policies in their business. As your business grows, you need to increase the boundaries and policies you have within your business to make it operate well. But you also have to renegotiate the boundaries you have in your personal life around work-life balance, right? Being willing to be a beginner in that, in that you are trying new things, but you're also being agile and willing to shift. You're willing to like kind of collect data and be like, okay, right now I really want my work hours to be Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to noon. I'm going to try it out and see how I like it and see how it works, right? Um, so I would love for you to share with me, send me an email and tell me what is it in your business or life you want to have this like fierce, tenacious beginner's mindset around, right? That you want to just drop your ego at the door, be willing to try new things, stay in the room, make a 90 day commitment, not make failure or rejection wrong, knowing that your success is inevitable, but really not half-assing this, really going at it with this new, beautiful, beginner's tenacious mindset. And even if you are a beginner, <laughs> whatever it is that you are, but having that advanced mindset. And I feel like my clients that are able to move the fastest really have this mindset and are able to go at it. And they're like, oh, a new challenge. I can do this. I can look silly. I can not care what other people think of me. And here's the thing. Usually it's not even like what others think of us. It's what we think of us right? We are so harsh on ourselves, right? Again, if we don't have good self-esteem or self-confidence, if we quote, have rejection or failure, we make it mean something about us. Oh my gosh. It means I'm a bad person. It means people don't like me. It means my business is going to, instead of like, no, they just said no to working with me or, oh my gosh, no, they just gave me feedback that they didn't appreciate when I said that one thing, I should apologize. I'll say something different next time, but it doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make my business doomed to fail, right? If we have that inner worthiness built in of, I am a good woman, I am a kind woman, I am a smart woman, I'm a woman that people love to hire, I'm a woman that people love to be friends with, I'm a woman that is radiant and magnetic and naturally easy to love. When we have that mindset, the little tiny failures or rejections don't mean anything, right? So this might mean going back to the drawing board, really reworking some of those basic self-image, those self-confidence things. So you have a little bit more tenacity and resilience as you are going out there, right? Maybe even some affirmations around like the more that I fail, the, the quicker I win, right? <laughs> the more I'm willing to hear no, the more yeses I'm going to hear. The more rejection I hear, the more success I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Fine. This is so true. I feel like at the start of my business, I was hearing a yes on every single sales call. And then my coach gave me a hard time and she was like, you know, that's actually not a good thing because it means you're just hopping on sales calls with people that are already sold, right? What about all those people that are on the fence? Are you inviting them to a sales call and are you actually having a sales conversation? And I was like, mm, maybe not, right? So I just think it's like realizing that like you might have a little bit of untapped potential if you are not hearing rejections and no and having some failure. And if you are, you're doing the right thing. Okay, I would love to hear um, what your takeaways are from this. And also, again, what you need to have the beginner's mindset in, in your business right now. What is it? And if you want my support around having that beginner's mindset so that you can grow your income to the next level, but in a way that feels really good, right? Like we want to feel good on the way to hearing a lot of no rejection and failure. The best way I know how to do that is to have a coach in your corner that's helping you know 
you're doing the right thing. Like, yes, you're seeing failures right now, but like you're focused on the right thing. You're in the right direction. You're doing a good job. I'm proud of you. Great job for taking the action. Great job for showing up and, you know, doing those small micro steps on the way to the macro win. And also sisters that are are failing right along with you that are doing the ups and downs in business. And I just think it is so normalizing in the Sell With Heart Mastermind calls to hear other people say like, oh, this didn't go so well, or, oh, someone said no to me. And then the next week them saying like, someone said yes to me. Oh, this succeeded. This went really well. Right. Just really normalizing that because here's the thing on Instagram, you're only going to see everyone's highlights and in a private mastermind, you're really going to see the behind the scenes and you're like, oh, I'm actually really normal right? If you want to apply for the mastermind, it takes 10 minutes. Feel free to let me know if you want the application link. I would love to invite you to apply for the mastermind. It only opens two times a year. And it is a small group of women and really my private mentorship where you're going to get lots of love and affection and strategic support and business strategy from me. So just let me know if you have any questions and sending you the biggest hug and the biggest high five of saying, I'm proud of you. It is not easy to be an entrepreneur. It is not easy to put yourself in that position of, you know, failing all the time, right? That is basically setting up for entrepreneurship is, is is being willing to fail all the time. But what I want to say is like, you're, you're maximizing your potential, right? You are being willing to step out, do the brave work. I remember I had this like aha moment. One of my favorite books actually on this is Gay Hendricks, The Big Leap. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. But the picture on that cover is a big goldfish leaping from a small tank to a bigger tank, right? I'm not sure if this is true, but I've heard that like goldfish only grow to the size tank that they're in. And I know for me professionally, this was so true, right? Like for me, I was kind of growing somewhat quickly. And actually right before I quit, offered I was offered to take over the department at the university that I was in charge of. And I actually turned that, you know, down because I just realized like I, you can, when someone else is your boss, you can only go so far, but when you're your own boss, you can push yourself as much as you want. And you can also profit from your own genius. So like just heck yes, the smart women, right? But it's just remembering to pace yourself. And like, I always talk about celebrate because you are growing so much faster as a woman and as a business person in entrepreneurship, but it's not going to feel like it, right? As a day job person, it's going to feel more rewarding because someone is patting your back. Someone is saying a, a good job. They're not raising the bar that high on you. And so you're always meeting the bar in entrepreneurship. You're not always meeting the bar. It's not going to feel as good, even though you are accomplishing and doing and being so much more. So I think it's just remembering that, acknowledging that. And for me, the best way I do that is having a coach that tells me good job, bragging in front of my friends, telling me good job. Also, you know, in my daily check-in, I write down my wins every day and I tell myself like what I am proud of myself for, right? And I have amazing team members that encourage me that even when I don't meet my goals, at least half of my goals, I don't meet you guys, right? But I have team members that say, hey, you didn't meet your goal, but guess what? You did better than last time right? And that's what we're celebrating. Okay. Hope this was useful for you and just sending you the biggest hug and just wanted to say, I'm so thankful to be your coworker and to be your um, partner in crime in this entrepreneurship journey. Sending you so much love. And again, let me know if you want mastermind invite and have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out today. Please hit that subscribe button so you can make sure to stay updated anytime a new episode drops. And I would love for you to join me in my free Facebook community. It's called The Heart-Centered Entrepreneur. We discuss the podcast episodes. I regularly go live and do free trainings. And you may even meet your newest biz bestie. So you can join at heartcenteredcommunity.com. It's absolutely free. And I cannot wait to see you in there.